ಶ್ರವಣಂ ಮನನಂ ನಿಧಿಧ್ಯಾಸನಂ ಲಿಸನ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಬ್ಸಾರ್ಬ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಲಿಸ್ನರ್ಸ್ ಸಾಯಿರಾಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಎ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಈಚ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಎ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಟೇಕನ್ ಟು ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಏಯ್ತ್ ಜಾನ್ವರಿ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ the discourses undertaken for study in this program are from the series of discourses delivered as part of the summer course in indian culture and spirituality 1991 have a listen please offering a most humble pranams at bhagwan's lotus feet Dear listeners, we welcome you to this week's episode of Shravanam, Mananam, Nidhidhyasanam. This is Prem from Team Radio Sai and with me is Sai Prakash. We are in the third episode of the Shravanam, Mananam series. We have started it all over again. We did the 1990 Summer Coast series the last time we were here and we have taken up the 91 series. We have just started the first discourse. We have played about three clips. We had the company of Professor Sudhir Bhaskar in the... past two episodes the starting two episodes today we are on our own so we're back to our usual format of sarprakash and myself here with of course swami being the main participant of our program if i could put it that way so before we begin to summarize what we've gone through and what we're going to be looking at today in this program i invite sarprakash to join me sairam sarprakash sairam prem yes as you just mentioned it's wonderful being here although it's it ties the tongue at times it's still wonderful because <laughs> we are the first students and uh, we listen to swami as our uh, listeners also listen to him and again this is a plea to everybody that um, if there are a few points which you think we could include in our discussion you could always mail them to us so that we will go through them and then bring them up in the next week's discussion absolutely and as you've mentioned it many times definitely we are the first listeners first learners <laughs> whatever we are speaking about in this program it reminds me of what uh, one of my teachers would say in the hostel you have this tradition of having a room leader for every room right one of the senior boys becomes the room leader mm-hmm. and so the teachers would tell them you know you'll have to speak to the students and tell them these are the do's and don'ts sometimes some students would say that sir i can't tell them this because i i'm guilty of not following it myself <laughs> that's right right and the teachers would tell them that's precisely why you should tell it to them okay <laughs> because the moment you commit to words mm mm-hmm. it becomes a very strong reminder for yourself correct that these are the things which swami likes and these are the things which have to be followed so i think many times during the course of the program we listen to some things from swami's discourses which always are strong messages for both of us here very so true for that we're really really grateful to swami for this program and grateful to the listeners who, who have you know given us such encouragement very true for very us to true. come back i don't think we would have had <laughs> the guts to do this otherwise uh, one of the listeners were sharing mm-hmm. uh, they were saying that there is a sense of you both sometimes sound so lost so you feel <laughs> a sense of camaraderie <laughs> with you uh, that's a fact because when we listen to some of these truths being spoken with so much love it's almost like getting access to something which is so inaccessible you know there is this fountain head of knowledge sitting high up in a mountain and if we were to climb up the mountain and reach up to him and try to get some knowledge from him i don't know how many of us would have actually gone up but here is swami who has come down for us and uh, taking us to the very heights of knowledge so uh, the experience is uh, really amazing and very frankly when i listen to some of these clips just closing my eyes i can actually visualize swami standing there on the stage in the brindavan auditorium where most of the summer courses took place and um, you know leaning slightly forward with both his hands resting on the table i'm not sure if we have the video of the 1991 summer course series but 1990 we do have mm. and um, you know reading the text is one thing listening to the audio is one thing but when you actually see him speak it's so amazing it's like 
you know how a child would sing twinkle twinkle little star or how um, a professor in mathematics would teach addition and subtraction to a school child swami is just with that amount of ease with that amount of spontaneity with that amount of you know love just sharing it's almost as if he is just passing it on through him it's just coming through him it's like he is a source the source and he is using his body to convey this message you don't see any amount of planning you don't see actually see him between the time he is given between the translator's voice thinking oh what should i say next <laughs> <laughs> there is absolutely no preparation it's so spontaneous right and one of the images which very strong for me is mm-hmm. you know sometimes swami's message is so strong straight forward and very powerful yeah you can see that intensity on swami's face you know correct so that, correct uh, that anger the uh, anguish uh, right, as well anguish right? anguish. anguish is the is yeah. a better word yeah but at the same time mm. when the translator takes over uh-huh. swami would smile correct correct right and then he would take on and again there would be that intensity on his face and then again when the translation is going on so you would look at the boys and smile you know the, that is smile. typical manasekam vachasekam karmanekam mahatmanam because when he is uttering those words he is 100% involved he is completely believes in what he is saying and he is completely speaking from i can't call it experience but it is definitely quote and quote experience like what he himself has gone through in his life and what he is teaching us he has followed everything that he has spoken of and um, so that gives it its power and then when swami speaks a particular statement he is 100% involved in it and this is something uh, very beautiful even on other days you know if swami is again quote unquote upset with somebody and swami is giving him a sound blasting you know swami would do it uh, in great style and in the uh, hearing view of hundreds of students be it a student or a teacher or a professor but again that is his love but there there is something very unique you would notice so here he is reprimanding a student and um, that student is probably shedding tears and he is saying swami please forgive me and swami no you didn't do this right you should not have done this and then he just turns around and in that split second gives a smile to another student right <laughs> <laughs> so you see it's not coming from the heart i mean when he is doing it the intention is that yes i should reprimand him for him to improve the intention is love the intention is always love but he found that this kind of sharp words is what is required for this current circumstance so that's what he would give and he would just look beside and he would give a smile to the next boy and that would irk this boy on the more <laughs> but mm. but that's his love again in fact uh, i was just listening to the interview which was aired uh, on our uh, asia stream a conversation with justice venkata chalaya who's currently the, the chancellor, chancellor of the uh, yes. university mm-hmm. and he's a person who is not had much association with swami or institutions though he is actually born i think uh, a few few miles from here oh it's okay in the anantapur district one of the manepalli or something one of the uh, towns okay but he's not had much association with swami a person of you know great eminence mm-hmm. and uh, he was sharing about uh, his experience of being here and having studied the system some very very profound thoughts okay i think in the course of the program we'll mention some of them but one thing he says is during the convocation address which he had to deliver mm-hmm. he referred to the teachers as acharya he did not say, use the word teachers, teachers. he said okay. acharyas mm. so the interviewer asked him you know why did you use the word acharyas he mm. said there is a perfect definition for this word acharyas there is a certain set of people who qualify to be called acharyas very true and he says that definition is given by kalidasa in one of his works uh-huh. he says an acharya is not just a knowledgeable teacher mm. an acharya is one who wants to share his knowledge mm. purely based on his love for his student beautiful he says purely based on that concern for the welfare of the student mm-hmm. one who shares his knowledge is an acharya and he said when i interacted with teachers here i could see in them that perfect reflection of what swami was because when swami spoke when swami wrote mm-hmm. you could see that love with which he wrote with that concern and that uh, you know the sense of emergency which he had in his uh, anguish correct and also of course swami has mentioned it in some of his discourses acharyas acharinchi right bodhinche right. vadu means the one who Puts follows right. what he is actually preaching and um, 
practice before you preach <laughs> i mean that's how it is so getting back to the first discourse in this 1991 series as we had discussed in um, both the previous episodes swami starts with education and um, it's almost as if swami is again quote and quote justifying the purpose of this summer course you know here are students who are in their undergraduate uh, and then late mid and late teens and early 20s all they have with them is a two month summer vacation and then the summer vacation is again cut short <laughs> because swami has <laughs> called them back for a summer course and here are students who have possibly some of them grumbling but most of them happy that they are back with swami are seated and what is it that he is having to offer to them on this occasion mm-hmm. when they have cut short their vacation and come back here is something that he is going to offer to them which is more subtle and which is more important than what they would have learnt from the world or from their parents from their friends from whichever places they have come from and what is it that swami is giving them so he defines what is education in the first chapter and starts with that beautiful poem right and in talking about the summer courses they are says it is not just for the sake of saying that we said that you know students were happy to come back mm. because i remember for the first time when we had the summer course when in my second year undergraduate the excitement which was there mm-hmm. you know, that real enthusiasm that you know because you talk about the dashara celebrations you talk about any other festival in prashantilam of course swami would often say vidyarthula ra when he is speaking Correct. you know the students would be given an opportunity to play an important role in all of these celebrations mm-hmm. but all said and done summer course is 15 days swami says it's for you yeah that's right, right. and 15 days swami is doing it only for you and swami is there for you i think that feeling was so special because you know we were all waiting especially since we have, we had not seen a summer course that idea that swami is conducting a summer course yeah and swami is going to take a class every day you know mm. each of these discourses which we go through is swami's period of the summer course very true <laughs> right? very true the the class which he was taking on the lighter side who can forget those glorious mangoes you know <laughs> we get those huge size mangoes right. <laughs> and that's the time of the year when the mangoes are ripe and uh, oh uh, which is sweeter you can't say swami's discourse or the mango definitely swami's discourse but right. <laughs> and going back to this discourse and that padyam as we said very beautifully swami points out at every aspect of life we chase in the process of acquiring education you know when we see why do we acquire education why do we acquire wealth swami points out at everything and you know he says you might be brave you might be wealthy you might do a lot of charity mm. you might have immense talent right but none of this is important especially if you don't have control over your body and senses mm-hmm. and if you don't have a steady mind that is turned inward right and a selfless heart right a yeah. firm and selfless heart firm and selfless heart yeah and swami in fact puts it as a challenge he says that this is the most difficult thing to acquire you know all of these things which you think are the th- purpose of education is quite easily acquirable what is difficult to acquire and what is necessary to be acquired is these things a firm heart a balanced mind control over body and senses very true and then swami starts by saying that lot of money lot of effort lot of time is given in discovery and in inventions of uh, science and how we get uh, you know in the fields of plastics electronics and computers atomic power and space research but he says what's the use of all this and um, are these making you better human beings yes i think here swam is drawing a line between standard of living and what you think is the purpose of life and redefining what actually is the purpose of life as swami has told many times the purpose of life is to go back from where you have come and you can do that only if you are a better human being there is a slight digression here i think it's in dhyana vahini swami very beautifully says that many people try to take up spiritual practices and um, um, they try to grow spiritually without the basic ingredient or the basic uh, aspect of becoming better human beings he says that is by itself the sole reason for the you know sadhana of many many 
people to go down the drain he mm. says the basic necessity the first step rather you know the first step of a spiritual life is to become a good human being <laughs> and he says people have overlooked that as we mentioned in i think the previous episode somebody may have a siddhi somebody may acquire a spiritual power i may be able to read minds i may be able to materialize things from thin air i may be able to do you know light fire with my sight so what <laughs> in fact you know when we were we are going through the uh, ramkatha raswaini mm-hmm. as part of the other program in that we came across this very beautiful and poignant uh, part in the story mm-hmm. where swami speaks of you know which is characteristic of swami's ramayana mm-hmm. swami calls mother sita and tells her mm-hmm. that our mission begins tomorrow Mm-hmm. You know, tomorrow we are going to play the drama of the <laughs> golden deer and ravana's abduction yes. of you at that time mm-hmm. you know rama says why do we have to do this oh. you no know, very very strong words mm. he says we have to teach the world a lesson mm-hmm. that someone like ravana mm-hmm. you know who is in the garb of a devotee but who has not controlled and conquered these vices within mm-hmm. he cannot be a devotee Oh you have to tell to people that you know the, the role of any knowledge of devotion of acquiring any skill or wealth mm-hmm. is that you should achieve this basic goodness very true and you're never complete without that and that is the message we have to send to the world and so mm. we are going to play this drama he says beautiful you know here when swami talks about science and spirituality yes um science has made progress but if you are looking at the latest frontiers of science and if you look at areas where science is actually coming to accept consciousness science is actually it has to accept i mean beyond a particular level you cannot separate the two in fact um, a little bit of quantum physics and um, people who are familiar with uh, niels bohr and you know the uh, einstein bohr uh, right, argument right. and uh, so there comes a time where everything in creation has a dual nature or uh, as he said it's complementary nature is a complementary nature here is a beautiful quote i would just like to read out mm-hmm. uh, by niels bohr he says this argument looks highly convincing at first we can admittedly find nothing in physics or chemistry that has even a remote bearing on consciousness yet all of us know that there is such a thing as consciousness simply because we have it ourselves hence consciousness must be a part of nature or more generally of reality which means that quite apart from the laws of physics and chemistry as laid down in quantum theory we must also consider laws of quite a different kind <laughs> <laughs> i mean if that's the closest a scientist can get to what is atma and to what is uh, pragna or consciousness but well he has gotten there but even here i do not really know whether we need greater freedom than we already enjoy thanks to the concept of complementarity so uh, the concept of complementarity he says you know th- there is this paradox of whether electron or light behaves as a particle or a wave wave and particle duality then there is the mind and body duality so these are mm-hmm. some parameters which he has uh, some examples of complementary properties that bohr has considered but the whole point is there is a time or there is an extent to which science can go and beyond that it has to go inwards and i mean that's what swami brings out so beautifully here he says yes there is growth in science there is uh, you know advances and it helps you it facilitates you but then there is an area beyond which it doesn't go you have to go inwards right in fact i think in premohaini swami mentions that you know mm-hmm. all that you do in the name of science in the name of technology mm-hmm. is just that you're taking the same few vital things an animal does to live mm-hmm. and doing it better right you're not doing what it what defines a human nature what defines a human birth mm. you're only taking the same thing you know an animal sleeps mm. can i sleep more comfortably an animal eats can i <laughs> eat right. more variety right. you know and mm. in fact swami makes that statement that man is only living like the best animal around yeah that, I mean, in fact this sentence of bohr again is so beautiful he says i don't know if we should consider laws of quite a different kind mm-hmm. but even here i do not really know whether we need greater freedom than we already enjoy greater freedom i believe is in the extent to which our senses can perceive 
So he's almost driving at the limitation of our senses at perceiving what the actual truth is. I mean, the degrees of freedom is, yes, you are limited by your senses. Then if you are really not limited by your senses, who are you? So I think that is where the esoteric takes over from science. <laughs> right. It's more like a saying also in most of Indian languages that either you should be completely ignorant or you should be completely knowledgeable. <laughs> mm. What happens when you increasingly gather more knowledge is mm. the feeling of uh, rude empowerment, yeah, brash false, feeling of false, empowerment. Uh, False right. wisdom, I would say. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That's what happens with science because one of the studies which talks about atheism and theism, they say that, you know, at a point in our history, we had a lot of things to fear. Mm -hmm. And generally, man tends to adore what he fears. Okay, okay. So we made a god out of fire. We made a god out of the sun. We made mm -hmm. a god. And the more we started finding scientific explanations for this, mm -hmm. there were no more objects which we did not know about. Mm -hmm. No more objects which we had a fear for. Yeah. You know, we might, I mean, we might be very far from complete knowledge of any of these objects. Mm -hmm. I mean, even now we can't define what the sun is completely. We can't define what fire is completely. Correct. But that little knowledge makes us feel that now I know it, I don't have to, you know, fear it anymore. I don't need to adore it anymore. It, mm. How can it be a deity? How can it be fire god or sun mm. god? <laughs> that kind of a feeling. Mm. Now, so these points which Swami has brought out here, yes, he says, I think in one of these lines, he says, material wealth is necessary, but to what extent? And there has to be a limitation. And um, then he goes on to give um, that basically anything that you think is giving you happiness from the material point of view is temporary and it's not everlasting. And he quotes the examples of Shivaji and Ramdas. He says they had everything they wanted to. And Janaka says, why did they actually give up everything? Why did Shivaji go in search of Ramdas and why did Janaka go in search of Yagnivalkya? That is for peace of mind. So, Absolutely. I mean, in fact, if you look at the devotees who came to Swami, mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing. You know, we we had somebody like James Sinclair come yeah. to Swami. Correct. It was there was a point of time when he was the richest man individual in the world. Is it? Apparently, one of the richest. Wow. Because he had diamond and gold mines, I oh, believe. Okay. <laughs> he says about that moment when he found a huge vacuum in himself. He said, "God, if you're there, you have, you have to come to me now." Right. So where does that vacuum come from? If money can fill it, if comfort can fill it, if success can fill it, mm. then there is no place for such vacuum in the life of a person like him. Right? I heard it from somebody, I don't remember who. But, you know, beyond a particular level of earning money, it's more the power that your mind drags you into. Right. Yes, money is there. There is enough money. Now, between a $10 million and a $20 million, there is no big difference. Right. If you can make $10 million, you are going to make $20 they, million. They have that saying, it takes effort only for the first million. First now. million, that's After right. After that, it multiplies. <laughs> multiplies. <laughs> but then, then again, it's power. So, it's like different degrees of, uh, um, you know, bindings right. that, uh, that bind you. You are bound by uh, the need to feel powerful. You're bound by the need to feel rich. I mean, that's how it Probably is. Probably explains why politicians go on hunger strikes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have much of it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so then Swami moves on to say that, yes, there is a lot of uh, values that have been forgotten and students are actually converting their heads into books. I mean, he says the education today is quite blind. It's not focusing on what it ought to do in terms of enriching life and education is for life not for living as Swami says and how to go about it in daily life he says then fear of sin love for God and morality in society that comes out very beautifully he says Deva Preeti Papa Bhiti and Sanganiti then of course Swami goes on to say beautiful play of words which always Swami uses Akara Manodu and Achara Manodu yeah. be a man in reality in practice mm -hmm. rather than just in the form Mm. Then uh, the other word which Swami uses in that discourse clip is very beautiful. Manavata Viluva, Viluva, Swami says. Human values. The values of human. When you talk of uh, currency, you talk of gold, you talk of any precious gems. Mm -hmm. Swami would often say this, all the value that it has is the value that you give to it. Right. Right. And Swami says human values. Mm. If you remove the values, there is no you know, value for the human birth at all. 
and Swami says that that's the important thing to go back to use even education even mm. secular education to go back to that human values yeah that and then he says important. that education is important but education imbued with integrity people filled with integrity is what is important and then that uh, what they learn should culminate in behavior i found that a very powerful statement absolutely i right. mean you mm. know what is right and wrong but if you choose not to act on what is in line with what is right then you're as good as not knowing what is right and wrong right so i think till here it was a quite a general uh, introduction yeah then swami goes to the specifics yes you no know, this point is of course uh, directly applicable to most education institutions where swami says education and a job must be disjoined mm. education should be for life not for a living i think this can be practically put into practice uh, in an educational institution right. i think i mean even if every premier institution in the country decides to drive this lesson to the students right that education is not for a job mm. you know, there is something more you have to take out of an education i think the change it would bring is Tremendous. would be enormous yeah i mean but you know the whole idea of swami standing there and speaking to he would say vidyarthulara vidya bodhakulara and you know patrons of education but right. he is the only master who is actually teaching the true kind of education that has to be taught and um, in some of these sentences swami has been very very powerful as we rightly said you know there's a lot of anguish in his voice and he says this is the sorry state of affairs the world is going into uh, listening to this and um, Uh, talking on his discourses that beautiful poem comes to my mind <laughs> <laughs> you know i think it's in satyasai speaks in one of the right. satyasai the speaks. first volume it, oh, is it? the first volume okay. begins with that mm. beautiful poem by professor kasturi i think he, he covers everything that can be told about swami's discourses about the discourse right and um, you know uh, it's so amazing he says it's for you you and you and every you <laughs> and every you <laughs> i mean the for words are every really arjuna for every arjuna in you that poem really describes all the aspects of what swami's discourse means all the ways in which a discourse of bhagwan can be described i think we have a recording of right in, in fact uh, we happened to stumble upon this in fact because this was uh, a video which was made for one of the international conferences of the sai oh. organization i think okay. some east european conference or something uh-huh. we happened to see this video and we requested them that we would like to share it on the website and uh, this entire poem was rendered by in the voice of mm. the legendary singer dana gillespie oh she renders it beautifully i mean it's an understatement dear listeners we will play that poem for you yes it's beautiful and very very soothing background music and you would see how wonderfully she rendered it and uh, i think we did a very lame attempt at <laughs> rendering this i mean sharing a passages from this poem when we did the first episode of shravana mananam nidhi das no oh, we did we actually read right, it out we, just a few passages <laughs> okay but i hope our listeners have forgotten it because this one is <laughs> simply superb so today we're going to listen to that entire poem rendered by dana glispy Have you heard our baba speak at public meetings anywhere? He never calls it speech, nor will you name it so. He does not raise his voice, harangue or rouse the mob or rail or fail. He does not hesitate. He will not calculate, hum and haw and pause and ponder, making you wonder why you came. He does not waver, wander, collecting thoughts, contriving notes. He does not waste a moment decorating thoughts in showy lace and frills clothing borrowed texts in shimmering gauze he is no orator pompous proud clamoring for claps publicity mad he will not circumambulate declaim or even speak he is the rain cloud bringing life to the parched ones here below he talks he talks to you and you and every single you that has gathered there to every single arjuna with heavy heart and empty hand afraid to fight the battle of life unto victory you feel he has come for you 
to you. You see him silently looking around, the searchlight eye, full circle swings. How lucky you are there. He smiles. He wins you by that smile. You scarce can take your eyes from that face, so alluring, so divine. You scarce can pull your heart from off his grip. The clasp is cool comfort. The silence deepens. Though thousands have been squatting, waiting for hours and hours, Himalayan stillness, twilight calm. Prema Swarupala, the golden hour has come. Heaven's gate ajar. The voice is sweet as honey, hived by heavenly bees from Parijata trees. His call is clarion clear. Oh, tis thrilling, tis filling rapture in the soul, flowing like the Ganga, freeing the bound, yielding rich reaping for just ploughing and sowing, welling and swelling like Gersopa Falls, yielding vast power for just wheeling and wiring. His talk is a cascade so limpid and pure, teaching, never preaching, unravelling all knots stilling the questionings ere they merge in mind, defining, refining, consoling the pining, commanding, yea, demanding the bending of pride, sparing no one, be he ruling or serving, chiding, reprimanding the fool and fanatic, joking and coaxing, poking fun at all hoaxing, quoting from what he said in the past ages, detailing facts of his incarnating. Resplendent poetry, spontaneous, sublime, painting pictures of transcendent truth, parable, proverb, scintillating bright, tinkling, twinkling, Tintinambulating lilt, every hour a minute, every minute a second, every word a mantra, every phrase sutra, a Gayatri a sentence, Upanishad a speech. For he is no well or tank or river, his is the ocean of wisdom divine. Oh, his words shower mercy like morning dew on every heart bud awakening from dreaming. He is feeding your roots and speeding the sap, sprouting the buds, painting the petals, perfuming them well, inviting the bees, ripening the pods with each word of his. There, the meaning of his word tiny seed drops on your rock-like heart. In wonder of wonders, it germinates there, sprouts and puts forth leaves. The silken half-blind baby roots do run about, tickling the stone, jabbing, pleading for suckling. Succeeding at last, it grows. And growing into a tree, your rock is broken into clay. His talk, you will find, is cooling, not freezing, warming, not burning, raining, not flooding, healing the ailing and hearts bewailing, soothing, not searing, no toxing, but tonic, balming and calming, all fact and no fiction. Every sentence spreads joy and scorches gloom, Impelling attention, compelling ascent, dispelling dejection, repelling sloth, attracting you nearer, detaching from bonds, infusing courage, infusing creeds, imposing no doctrine, composing all feuds, informing, so charming, never harming, disarming, 
sifting the responding, lifting the desponding, stressing on doing, behaving and living, appealing for feeling, believing and acting, calling all listening to spurn imitating, vainly disputing, blind leading the blind, knocking at paradise through power and pelf, or boasting of branches of family tree, and seeking for peace in earning and spending and wanting and panting and hoarding and guarding. As you hear him talking, you quietly resolve to take a step forward on the pilgrim road, unfold your wings and soar into the sky. You feel you are a lion, cheated into bleating, a diamond set in dirty lead. Engaging in no fray, enraging no foe, he is welcoming all who are thirsty or starving or limping or blinking or climbing and sliding, raising the stooping, embracing the drooping, assuaging pain, assuring his grace. He reminds us all of the road we have missed. He describes the joy of the journey's end. He opens our eyes. He strengthens our limbs. He hardens the struggling, groping his way, awakening the sleeping, making the sitting stand, the standing to walk, the walking to reach. Proclaiming, revealing, announcing to all, asserting his coming for our burden assuming, redeeming the wayward, the downcast, diseased, underlining the truth, undermining the false. Ah, what is this? What luck, what grace. Even as he talks, it blossoms into song. Oh, captivating song. He teaches us to pray, tranquilizing all the furious waves, stealing the nerves, strengthening the will, attuning our soul to dharma, satya, prema. And when it stops and you open your eyes, you will find them full of tears. Your neighbor weeps like child for mother, but why? Look up and see, he has left the dais. Be proud you had the chance. From this moment, I know you are bound to be ascending, attempting adventurous soul. Arjuna resuming arms for the fray, with Krishna leading the horses aright. How lucky you heard him talk. <laughs> no, no, what to say. Beautiful. And in fact, even as those words were being rendered, so much of the discourse we are going through is actually summarized in that. You know, yes, many of the nice. points which we see yeah, here very you know, nice. about pretense, about mm. uh, you know the idea of trying to earn a birth in heaven through power and through uh, education and learning. And I mean, uh, the perfect instrument, I would say, Professor Kasturi. Beautiful, definitely. <laughs> and... Uh, I mean, why should we speak at all after this? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful and so very soulfully rendered by Dana Gillespie. Yeah, that's right. In fact, I think in one of Satisai Speaks, mm -hmm. one of the chapters, if I'm not mistaken, he says, Sambhashanam, mm -hmm. not uh, like Upadesham. It's okay. not, he says, my discourses are Sambhashanam. They are a conversation. It's not just a teaching. It's not just a, a, a discourse. It's a conversation. He converses with the actual you. He's not conversing with you as you think you are, but with the actual you he's conversing. Right. In, in fact, uh, I think in one of our discussions, or uh, we had come up with this, there was a quote we had read somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, a learned person, an intelligent person, or a person of immense knowledge, okay. if you ask him a question, he can give you answers for your question. Mm -hmm. But it takes a master to answer you. Oh, because the questions can be common, 
कर बट यू नेवर नो वॉट इज द इंटेंशन और वॉट इज द पेन और वॉट इज द कन्फ्यूजन बिहाइंड द क्वेश्चन इट सेल्फ राइट इन दैट्स वाई मेनी टाइम्स वन स्वामी गिवस एन आंसर टू यू नो यू वुड बी सिटिंग देयर वन ऑफ द बॉयज आस् क्वेश्चन और डिवोटी आस् द क्वेश्चन Sometimes we might not be able to relate to the answer because that answer is not an answer to the question, but it's a answer to the person who is asking the question. In fact, on the lighter side, when Swami, my leg is paining, <laughs> cut it and throw it in Chitravati. He would say, <laughs> he would say, this is Satya Sai Baba, whose every word is based on truth. And he says, cut it and throw it in Chitravati. But what what does it mean? I mean. it's the ultimate truth everything he spoke is based on that ultimate right. truth one of the uh, devotees say you know there is this person who comes for darshan and uh, he is a sadhaka basically and he's he's on his pilgrimage he comes to swami is waiting waiting swami does not speak to him and uh, everybody is you know uh, feels bad for him because mm-hmm. he seems to be a very sincere sadhaka and you know sometimes you feel you know swami is speaking to all the other people and here is a real aspirant yeah. you know and swami you listen to swami's discourse hmm. this person seems to be a perfect description which swami is giving there in the discourse right. swami doesn't speak to him <laughs> and uh, apparently after one particular darshan this person comes out and he's jubilant he said mm-hmm. he says i've got my message uh uh-huh. i can leave now mm. he says but swami never spoke to you mm. He said no. When Swami was coming along, I mm. got up and I I was so desperate. So this, today I thought I'll ask Swami. Mm. Swami said, "Cool, chow, cool, chow, cool, chow." Wow. <laughs> and uh, he said, the moment Swami said that, mm. I realized mm. that Swami is telling me, "Don't be so desperate. Mm. Do what you're supposed to do and be where you are. It'll come to you. Automatically come to you." <laughs> My God. And he said, "Yeah, this is all I need to know. Mm. This is what I was waiting for. Swami has given me so the message." So beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> Right, <laughs> dear listeners, I think it is time we should listen to Swami's voice and at right. least play one clip in this session of Shravanam right. Manam Nidhiyasana. So this is the fourth clip, but before that, I think uh, one of our listeners had once asked us where to find this poem. So if anybody is wondering, this is in the first volume of Satya Sai Speaks. Mm-hmm. Again, you can find it online in sssbpt. dot info. If you go to the first volume, first chapter, this poem will be found there. Go now to the discourse. We are. Uh, in the discourse which was delivered on uh, 20th may 1991 and this is the fourth clip of that discourse bil mano sampadana 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 kaadu pradhanam samskaram chaala pradhanam we are concentrating only on earning what is the use of earning dana samskaram anipindi ee naadu poorthi aduganti poyinadi the samskaras or not to talk care for today they are destroyed completely mana jeevitam anta kuda nu dhanamu dhanamu dhanam emiti ee dhanam what is this money which we are carrying so dhanamu atyavasarame money is essential kaani mitimire dhanamu matihani kalipistundi excessive money will make people go crazy nen anek paryanu cheptuntanu pillalaku i tell students in amma jeevitam anaku avasaramai anipindi dhanam manam sampadinchukovali you should earn as much money as is necessary for our daily life nasreyo niyamam vina there is niyamame lekapothe manaku shreyas cheyaledu there is no welfare without limits and regulations mana body lopala 98.4 temperature untuntadi in our physical body the temperature is 98.4 kaani 99 vastunnatke this is not a if it becomes 99 degrees then he will have developed fever అదే విధముగాని మన యొక్క ఐపాల్ లోపల కూడాను ఎంత వెళ్తురును అంత మాత్రమే చూడగలదు సిమిలర్లీ అవర్ ఐస్ కెన్ సీ ఓన్లీ దట్ మచ్ ఆఫ్ లైట్ ఇది మితి మీరినటువంటి లైట్ ని చూసేటప్పటికి రెటినా బర్న్ అయిపోతుంది ఎక్సెసివ్ లైట్ కెన్ బర్న్ ది రెటినా మన బ్లడ్ ప్రెషర్ కూడాను 120 బై 80 పర్ఫెక్ట్ నార్మల్ గా ఉంటుంది అవర్ బ్లడ్ ప్రెషర్ ఆల్సో మస్ బి 120 బై 80 దీనికి ఏమైనా కొంచెం మీరిపోయిందంటే ఏదో ఒకటి హార్ట్ ట్రబుల్ ప్రారంభమైంది ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఎక్సీడ్స్ ఆర్ ఫాల్స్ అదే విధముగానే మానవునికి ధనం కూడాను అవసరమే సిమిలర్లీ మ్యాన్ నీడ్స్ మనీ నిత్య జీవితానికి పరులపైన ఆధారపడకుండా స్వ తన యొక్క జీవితాన్ని తాను గడుపుకునేటువంటి ఇంట్లో ధనం అవసరమే మనీ ఇస్ రిక్వైర్డ్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ దట్ వన్ మే నాట్ డిపెండ్ అపాన్ అదర్స్ ఫర్ లివింగ్ ది డైలీ లైఫ్ కానీ ఈ నాటి విద్యావంతులు ఈ ధన నిమిత్తమై పడేటువంటి పాటలు చూస్తే చాలా ఆశ్చర్యంగా ఉంటుంది వన్ ఇస్ సర్ప్రైజ్ అండ్ అస్టానిష్డ్ వెన్ వన్ సీస్ ఎన్ ఎడ్యుకేటెడ్ మ్యాన్ హౌ మచ్ హిస్ ఆస్పైర్ టు అర్న్ మనీ చదువు లేనిటువంటి యొక్క పల్లె మనిషి అందైనా కొన్ని ఒక త్యాగం ఉంది కానీ చదువుకున్నటువంటి వాడి అంత త్యాగమే లేదు వన్ కెన్ సీ సాక్రిఫైస్ అండ్ హెల్ప్ఫుల్ నేచర్ 
in an uneducated villager but not in an educated man who is totally ekkada vidya samasthalu adhikanga perugutunnayo wherever education is to ekkada nyaya shastramulu adhikanga perugutunnayo wherever law courts are increasing akkadane avidyalu anyayamlu akramulu anacharamlu adhikanga perigipothunnayi there only all sorts of wrong things are happening ఏ విద్యా సంస్థలు ఏ న్యాయస్థానములు లేనిటువంటి యొక్క కారణములు ఎందుకు కాని పల్లెలు ఎందుకు కాని మానవులు ఏదో అంతో ఇంతో సహజ జీవితాన్ని గడుపుతూ ఉన్నారు ఇఫ్ యు టేక్ విలేజెస్ ఆర్ ఫారెస్ట్ మ్యాన్ ఇస్ లివింగ్ ఎ న్యాచురల్ లైఫ్ నాట్ ఎన్ ఆర్టిఫిషియల్ ఆర్ హార్ప్ఫుల్ లైఫ్ ఈ నాడు దేశమంతా కూడాను ఇంత దిగుదారుగా అయిన కారణం ఏమిటి వాట్ ఇస్ ది రీజన్ ఫర్ సచ్ ఎ ఫాల్ విద్యార్థులు ఎందుకు మితిమీరినటువంటి యొక్క ఆశలు పెరిగిపోతున్నాయి a growth of excessive desires in students is responsible for this state less luggage more comfort ee baadhyatulu kramakramina tagginchukovali reduce your desires and responsibilities dhanam anetundi mana kaalaku veskune tundi shoes vanti di money may be compared to the shoe which we wear aa shoes kaalaku correct ga untunte chakkaga nadustam if it is a correct sized shoe it is comfortable to walk konchu loose gaane unte kuda manam narchalem if it is a little loose you will find it difficult to walk with it tight ga unte kuda manam narchalem if it is tight also it causes inconvenience kanu adhigam dhanam kaani takku dhanam kaani maanavuliki konchu baadhana kaligistundi therefore man is inconvenient if there is excessive money or shortage of money avasaram ayina inta dhanam maatrame manaku kavali we should keep as much money as is necessary for us appude manasika shanti manaku labhyam avutundi then only we will have full peace mana shanti mane inde untunnadi kaani bayata ledhu mental peace is within ourselves enni chadavulu chadivi emi prayojanam what is the use of your learning enta chadavulu chadivina nemi phalamu tanno satta raatha tappinchane evari taram whatever education you acquire what is the use who can change what is written chadda puttulu tanakala cheri neni ఎండ బారులు బుద్ధులు బెండు బారు ఇఫ్ రాంగ్ ఐడియాస్ వర్ టు ఎంటర్ ఇన్ టు యువర్ హెడ్ యు గో ట్రై అండ్ ఈ నాటి చదువులు 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 అనగా కేవలము ప్రపంచంలో జరిగేటువంటి విషయాలంతా కూడా తనలో చేర్చుకోవటం కాదు చదువులు వెన్ యు సే ఎడ్యుకేషన్ ఇట్ ఇస్ నాట్ ఫిల్ యువర్ హెడ్ విత్ ఆల్ సార్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ అబౌట్ ద వరల్డ్ లోక సమస్త సుఖినోభవంతు అందరి క్షేమము ఉండినప్పుడే నీ క్షేమం కూడా అందులో చేరి ఉంటుంటుంది when you aspire for the welfare of the entire world your welfare is also taken care ee naati vidyavantulu kevalamu tana yokka vyaktitvanni tana yokka kutumbanni maatrame drushti yanduchukuntunnaru samajam yokka chintani em maatramu cheyatam ledhu today's educated man is concentrating on the welfare of his family and himself alone he doesn't care for the society samajame lekapothe manam ekkada untunnam if there is no society where are you mana jeevitham anta samajam tho kattapadi untundali our entire life is integrated with the samajam chemanga undinappude mana chemam when society is safe we are safe kaani ee satyanni vidyavantudu gurtinchadaniki prayatninchadam ledhu but today's educated man doesn't seem to recognize this manam ni prayanam anetundi vyakti kutumbamu samajamu moodinti dwara manam prayanam cheyali man has to travel through the individual the society and the nation from i to we provide to we ee vidhamaina ittu yokka jeevithanni manam chesina nirantaram kodam i i i i emiti i if you drown yourself only with this i i for rendu rakamla ittu i untunna ikkada there are two types of i one letter i is one one is one letter i three letter i e y e i three letters i is one the second one is three letter i e three letter i is body three letter i is body one letter i is self one letter is soul that is soul neevu body kaadu you are not the body body neeku oka instrument it is only an instrument mind neeku oka instrument mind also is only senses an instrument neeku oka instrument senses are also it is sahayam cheskoni ee soul eka akshara main ante ayini neevu aadharam cheskovali you have to base your life on one letter i but use all the other things as instruments కొత్త విద్యార్థులంతా కూడా నువ్వు ఇందులో ప్రవేశించారు విద్యార్థులారా తెల్లవారి మొదలు రాత్రి పరిమితున్నంత వరకు కూడా నువ్వు ఐ ఐ ఐ దిస్ ఇస్ మై హౌస్ మై కార్ మై ప్యాంట్ మై షర్ట్ మై బుక్ అన్ని మై 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 ఆర్ యూ డియర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ది డే బ్రేక్ టిల్ యూ గో టు బెడ్ యూ గోన్ యూజింగ్ ది వర్డ్ 
my body, my creative, my thinking. This is my what? body. When you say my body, who are you? This is my mind. My mind. This is my hand. My hand. This is my leg. My leg. But who am I? Then the question is, who am I? The question we ask only twenty fifty years back, but I can't even understand it. It is difficult to come across students who put this. This is question. my body means my is separate from body. When you say this is my body, you are different from the body. Who are you? Then who are you? God. The my body means body is separate from my. When you say it is my body, your body is separate from you. This is actually man, we go tinch kunna pude. Nije maine kunte aajat ko man ko. అభివృద్ధి <laughs> 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 So let's repeat it. I actually felt that as I was hearing this portion because it's so many this body senses and mind that was 1990 summer course <laughs> <laughs> and now we are in 1991 but then that infinite patience with which Swami again and again reiterates the truth. Absolutely yes. in fact uh, when, they, uh, when we were talking about the sports meet mm-hmm. one of the uh, students were sharing this particular event of the march past yeah. you know, that doesn't change at all you know you might put all kinds of colored clothes <laughs> and do the marching but it's still the same marching with so many contingents coming and uh, you know they all come to the stage swami will be sitting on the dais and they do that ice right mm. seeing it once a year is you know <laughs> can take quite a toll on you but swami would see it multiple times every year every because he would year. come for practice sessions sometimes two three practice sessions of the you know the marching and when our swami said this you know swami uh, how come you are able to see the same march past year after year and swami is swami showed a expression of surprise mm-hmm. and he said but the students are different wow you know the the feelings with which the students do is the same but still swami is responding to a different batch of students some so new amazing. students so amazing you know when swami says the students are new mm. so let me share this again and of course that particular example i think i mean i very freshly remember in my mind mm-hmm. when i heard that for the first time swami saying this is my handkerchief dropping it and saying i am different from my handkerchief yeah so when i say this is my body mm. it is such a simple and striking example and very beautiful every time swami mentions it right in this clip i think swami starts with um, saying um, that uh, samskara that is you know refinement as we would otherwise define it is more important than sampadana that is earning of wealth so this is something which is best told by swami you know if you take his own life here is somebody who had no bank account all through his life and here is somebody for those who have actually seen i mean the room in which swami actually lived for a long time over 40 45 years it's just an 8 by 10 room like these are things which money can buy you it can buy you a big room it can buy you some comforts it can buy you but then here swami is saying that samskara or refinement is more important so i mean yes money is important to the extent it's needed but swami through his life has shown that that kind of refinement is what is actually and in, in fact even as you were uh, you know seeing about uh, there are some needs in the human birth which transcend just money and comfort and some of these things in fact one of the social studies which have been done they say at some point very early in in this pursuit for money the driving force changes from basic comforts and basic uh, you know things which you can buy with money there is that strong need to be accepted in the higher strata of society okay that you feel that i want to belong to that class mm. i want to become an elitist i want to become a little more you know there's another niche group which i want to get into mm. and very often you would see that what differentiates you know one class from the other is apart from the luxuries apart from the monetary reasons mm-hmm. it is this culture which swami would say you know the culturally right. you're different right that sanskriti which swami would often mm. say mm. you know that uh, politeness that mm. courtesy in the way you carry yourself surprisingly i very vividly remember 
that uh, sanskriti was a major topic in the first discourse of the 1990 right, right. series first discourse you know but i even remember the examples of rice and right. husk which swami says the that metal is, becoming a watch exactly <laughs> he says that is refinement right. and again the first discourse of this series swami says talks about refinement right and of course from there he goes on to probably the third or fourth discourse of the 1990 samukha <laughs> series swami defined the senses with one of the terminology which is used to depict senses called matraha right that which you know as a certain measure right and the same examples you know the yeah. that of uh, body temperature that of the ability of the eye to see limited brightness mm-hmm. and some of these things and swami says similarly even there is a limit on how much you can earn and how much you can fill your life with money to mm-hmm. and after a certain point it does more harm than it can do good right. and uh, yeah we here swami is talking about uh, the more educational institutions mm. come up in a society there seems to be a fall in the uh, basic in, values in the basic values mm. in, in fact uh, i mean i was referring to that interview with the chancellor for university mm-hmm. justice venkata chalaya mm-hmm. he makes an observation mm-hmm. that uh, a, st- a statistic that he gives in 2006 okay. i mean i was really shocked to hear this number mm. in 2006 mm-hmm. there were 19000 colleges in india Okay. Okay, that was the figure. Mm. In 2012, mm. there are 46,000. Wow. He says there is an unbelievable blast mm. in the you know the number of educational institutions, mm. and he says we are not prepared for this. Mm. We have not prepared good teachers. We have not prepared good administrators for this. Mm. When you see that, you know. these many institutions have come without the right perspective towards education that's right and people still get their degrees and right. they still get their certificates Absolutely. and mm. you know in uh, many discourses swami says you know i would not blame the youth mm. they're not being given the right direction A good example is not being set for them mm. you can really see that as always swami actions speak louder than his words because here is an institution here is a university where he has set the ground rules straight <laughs> and he says yes what you study that may be important for your living but f- this is what you need for life right and of course as we said that point where uh, uh, swami speaks about the separation between the body and the thing and uh, before that of course swami makes a beautiful point that you know the moment you strive for the happiness of everybody around mm-hmm. approach your own happiness swami doesn't say that don't seek to be happy but if you approach your happiness with this idea that if everyone around is happy i can be happy and that is a way in which education automatically gets mm. purified if you approach with that kind of an uh, perspective i'm sure we are running out of time but um, maybe i would just like to conclude this session with a paragraph from rabindranath tagore's essay on education okay and um, it's something we can discuss on you know start of the next session with right but the words are so beautiful he says on each race is the duty laid to keep alight its own lamp of mind as its part in the illumination of the world to break the lamp of any people is to deprive it of its rightful place in the world festival he who has no light is unfortunate enough but utterly miserable is he who having it has been deprived of it or has forgotten all about it india has proved that it has its own mind which has deeply thought and felt and tried to solve according to its light the problems of existence the education of india is to enable this mind of india to find out truth to make this truth its own wherever found and to give expression to it in such a manner as only it can do <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's a lot said in these few sentences right. and we'll uh, have to go into that in detail I think probably as you said we'll start the next session with that and yeah. of course there are some other points which Ami makes here which right, probably right. will need a lot of deliberation for us to understand not about for making other people understand that's right right so, so that dear listeners brings us to the end of this program as, we, as Sai Prakash was saying we're running short of time do join us next week for the continuation of this discourse As always with immense gratitude we offer of our effort at Swami's Lotus Feet. <laughs>